you guys ready this evening? Let me hear you, please make it so loud. Give it up and make, give a big, huge welcome to the fantastic Miss Virginia Jones! Bitches, save it, save it, save it. It's weird because my stripper name was Lilac. Um, <laughs> my name's Virginia. I'm so glad to see, or more specifically, not see all of you. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I am currently exploring the boundary between goth girl and mob wife. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I, people usually think the same thing when they see me. They think, oh God, she looks like that. Uh, one person had sex with that other person, and then she came out. And that's, that's true. Um, they were just my parents, like that's, we all came that way. Um, I, uh, who am I? I? I got a tattoo to tell me who I am, and this is it, it's an octopus. Uh, if you're cute, you know, you can touch it. Um, if you're not cute, don't fuck with me, you know you're not cute. Um, it upset my mother, you know, kind of of course, like that's its job, right? She made this, and then I've just been screwing it up ever since. <laughs> and she likes to say, yeah, well, if you'd been born with it, we would have left you at the hospital. <laughs> and she would have had to, because that baby would have been sick. <laughs> Sick ass baby. Like, don't even send that baby to school. Just give it a fucking guitar. That baby would be evil. Uh, I recently joined a um, a super dangerous all girl bike gang, and um, it's all comedians. And we we meet at the Trader Joe's in Silver Lake um, <laughs> because that's where that sort of thing goes on. And uh, I was on the phone with my mother and kind of waiting for the gathering of my dangerous all-girl bike gang. And a girl I don't know on a bike comes up and I'm like, hey, are you here to join the dangerous all-girl bike gang? And she said, yeah. And my mom's like, I want to join the bike gang. <laughs> and I'm like, well, mom, you can't because you live in Austin and we are based in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> and then she's quiet for a second and then she's like, I don't know if I'm crazy about you riding a motorcycle around. <laughs> Mother, obviously it's bikes. <laughs> who the f like, who do you think I am? Like, this is who I've always been. I'm riding a pink racing bike. <laughs> and my mom goes, well, I don't know. You got that tattoo? <laughs> she showed me. Um, I am the girl who spent way too long watching an old man sleep on a bench at LACMA. <laughs> because I was not sure he wasn't art. <laughs> Just wanted to be sure. In my defense, he was the perfect old man sleeping on a bench at a museum. He was wearing blue blockers. He'd gotten a little hot, so he'd pulled one trouser leg up. And he was wearing a hat indicating that he was a veteran of foreign wars. And when he woke up and saw me taking pictures of him, he was real mad. <laughs> and I moved away. So it's good to be recording an album. Uh, I've been doing comedy a long time. I've been doing it nine years. And um, I always kind of thought someone would ask me to make a record, and then nobody uh, has. So, uh, <laughs> so we're DIYing it. 
Ja, für Punk Rock, ja. But comedy is a cool job, and uh, one cool thing about it is you get to travel, you get to travel around, go places you wouldn't ordinarily go, like meet people with different backgrounds, you know, different like thoughts and ideas, like different uh, numbers of teeth than I have. Uh, I always like to think about my first road gig, which is where you don't sleep at your house, um, was in a little town uh, in the south of Oregon called Medford, Oregon. And uh, it's, oh, it's very glamorous. And, uh, and the bar was called Ground Zero because they'd heard of 9-11, but they were never going to go to New York, so why change, you know? Screw those big city Jews was the attitude <laughs> at Ground Zero. Um, so Ground Zero, which some people in the room have worked at, uh, it's just like this, you have the microphone stand, microphone stand, audience, right? Like traditional places. And then right behind you, uh, there's a shiny brass pole. And I was very new in my you know, career and I, I was an idiot and I was like, <laughs> is this what I think it is? What is this? And the guy way in the back goes, yeah, that's where the pretty girls dance. <laughs> yeah, because Medford will hurt your feelings. <laughs> and I had to call my mom, and I'm like, mom, I'm pretty, right? And she said, well, <laughs> you're unique looking. Because sometimes your mom will hurt your feelings. But I, uh, it's a cool job, comedy. But my job before, I got to travel around all over Asia. And some of you who've known me longer know that uh, for many years, I was working as a, um, there's a name, for, it's a, you've seen it on the news, it's a heroin mule. And, um, oh, don't judge. I feel like there was some judgment over there. And I simply, I will not have it. Uh, it paid a lot, and I did not have to finish university and but this one time I was in Vietnam now to, to give you a little background the technical term for what I was doing in Vietnam was rat holing and um, I went to a makeup counter because unique does not happen all by itself does it ladies and gentlemen no it doesn't it doesn't it needs help so I picked up a couple of things and the girl at the counter told me that I owed her one million Vietnamese dong. I don't know if anyone has ever asked you for one million of something, but on a very cellular level, you freak out. <laughs> like, I should go. Uh, just get this vision of Christopher Walken, like in Russian roulette, and Didi Mao. Um, But she called me down, she was like, it, turned, it was like 60 bucks. Because it turns out, at that time, there were 15,735 dong in a dollar. It's amazing. And that's when I knew that I was the luckiest girl in the world. Because most girls, you know, they don't get to see that much dong their whole lives. Whole lives, yeah. But then I went to my next country, I went to Singapore, and I went to the exchange counter, and I tried to turn in my dong. And the guy at the counter told me that he didn't have any dong, and that he didn't want any dong. And he told me essentially that my dong was no good there. And I said, I know that, okay? because the electrical outlets are different. Now, that is a joke for women and for people who do understand electricity in different countries. Um, I'll tell you another thing I know. Kittens are like Thai hookers. When you first meet them, they're all little and cute and interested in you. Oh, what have you got there? Is it yarn? But if you take them home and try to make them part of your life, they just get fat and hateful, man.
like most of you, I live in Los Angeles, and I love Los Angeles, and it's very exciting. Like, it's very exciting for a comic to come here and, and work with people who are trying to do their very best, like, just really trying to push it and, uh, and do the best stuff that they can. Um, and it's, it's cool to be with other, like, ma makers and doers, you know, creatives. And I just get so energized and excited and when one of my friends tells me something like, oh, I'm writing a book, I'm like, oh my god, that's so amazing. Uh, why don't you make something that people want? Um, <laughs> You know, like an app that finds pot dispensaries or <laughs> like a burrito inside of another smaller like burrito with inside. People love burritos. Like, <laughs> and let me be clear, this is not the world I want. Like, I, didn't, I don't want to, I didn't make it. I'm just participating in it. Like, I didn't want to live in a world that made Smurfs too. <laughs> I didn't want that but I'm having too much fun to throw myself in front of a bus at present, so here we are. I have a sister in New York and she's very competitive with me. We're always kind of on a low level, like back and forth about which is better. And she's like, oh God, don't you just hate it in LA how people are so fake, pretend to like you and ugh. I love it when people pretend to like me. <laughs> I love it that they've made the effort. I enjoy it. In New York City, if someone dies on the subway, which, let's face it, sometimes happens. If someone dies on the subway, everyone around them is secretly a little bit excited that there's that much more personal space they can now divide amongst them. And if someone else dies, maybe tomorrow, I can put my backpack on my seat. Um, but uh, like, like several of you in this room, I moved here from, from Portland, Oregon, uh, which is different. Um, we have uh, seasons. And um, you know, y you never remember more like how spoiled you are in LA uh, than at springtime, because in, in Portland, you've never seen anything like it. When spring happens, everyone comes stumbling out into the street from the darkness, just kind of shading their eyes and crying and saying, we did it. <laughs> We did it! <laughs> I don't have to open my wrist to see color. And then... <laughs> and LA, it's just more low-key. It's just like, oh, <laughs> my organic coconut oil liquefied. <laughs> that means it's spring. But because I live in LA, I am working on some screenplays, because that's a requirement. You have to go to yoga, you have to write screenplays. I'm just trying to do what I'm supposed to do. And uh, I got two. Okay, so the first one is about um, a woman with epilepsy, and she is uh, trying to overcome her health issues uh, to compete in a regional belly dancing contest. And uh, that's called No Great Shakes. And, um, <laughs> But we're making her a star. <laughs> she does have epilepsy. She's only pretending to be a belly dancer. Um, the other movie, this is, this is a romance of our times. Okay, so this is a couple, they break up, and they immediately see each other on a social media dating app. And then it's awkward, and they swipe, they swipe left. And then the rest of the movie is them just a montage of them swiping through another 20,000 people. And eventually they get back together because they were the least shitty people. <laughs> I got two names I'm working on for that one. Two names. I got um, uh, Return to Tinder or, uh, or Tinder Loving Care. Uh, I live in Silver Lake because that is what is required. And uh, there is no place for me to be, really. And uh, the other day in my neighborhood, I saw a, a lost cat sign, and the cat's name was Yeezus. In my opinion, if you name your cat Yeezus, I hope you don't get it back, <laughs> right? Because you did not love that animal. 
That animal is a hilarious trope for you to put your wonderful sense of humor on. In five years, you're gonna have a baby and you're gonna put it in a Ramon shirt. I hope a child finds Jesus. Well, I mean, I hope all children find Jesus, but... <laughs> I hope a child finds Jesus, and I hope that he names him Patches or Grumbles or Socks or some kind of fucking cat name having to do with his color or personality. Um, my roommate, uh, I, don't, I don't have an animal of my own right now, but my roommate has a cat, which means that I sort of have a cat, right? Like, there's a cat available. And she's not always using it. I got really embarrassed the other day because I called the cat a dead cat's name. But then I remember that it just didn't matter. She didn't know that cat. Bonus round, she doesn't know her own name. <laughs> she doesn't care. Um, so uh, the cat eats venison, she eats deer meat, because that's what her mother has decided she should eat. It's fancy, right? It's high, a glossy coat, all that. Um, and it's fine, but I worry that it sets her up for disappointment. Because that's what, she, like, what if our lives were to change? Like, unemployment, zombie apocalypse, what have you. Like, she thinks deer meat is delicious. That's what she expects to eat. Now, do you know, in nature, how many cats it takes <laughs> to take down a deer? <laughs> like 30, 40 cats working together. <laughs> in a way that cats don't. Out there in the forest with little walkie talkies, <laughs> meow. <laughs> <laughs> meow. <laughs> Therefore, it is my opinion that cat food should be made out of mouse meat <laughs> and disabled birds. <laughs> Something she has a shot at. Something she has a reasonable shot at. She's a fucking house cat. Like, and the label would just be like a bird with its wing and a sling and like a little sad word bubble going, eh, it's nature. <laughs> and that is the platform I, that I'm running for president on in 2016. Yes. <laughs> Cat me. Cat me, 2016. So, um, I was thinking about it's weird what attracts us to one another. Like, you know, we, we go online and like try to like pick traits. Like here's the things that my ideal mate does, likes, seems like. But it's mo as far as I can tell, it's mostly smell anyway. <laughs> I mean, it is. Like you can like their picture, you can like, you know, their list of things and you meet them and you're like, you don't smell right. Um, <laughs> sorry. Just next time, just mail me a t-shirt or something. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But sometimes we like each other for music, right? Like sometimes guys like girls because of the music, like they have music in common, and that makes sense. It means you're gonna wanna go to the same, you know, goth bars. Uh. <laughs> you're gonna wanna go to the same shows, you're gonna have stuff in common. But the thing is this, most girls kind of inherit the music from their ex-boyfriends, <laughs> right? Like, there's music that girls will like on their own. Duran Duran. Bell and Sebastian, <laughs> Kesha, <laughs> Beyonce. You know, it's like poor Kesha. She got out of rehab and she's like, are you shitting me? I've been spelling my name with a dollar sign. <laughs> For years, okay. People must have thought I was such an asshole. And we did. But like, uh, you know, generally, if you like a girl who really likes Metallica, that means her seventh grade boyfriend really liked Metallica. <laughs> and I'm not saying women aren't cool, we're very fucking cool. But if you meet a woman who likes um, Guided by Voices, you haven't met a woman. <laughs> I 
None of us do. Captain Beefheart neither. I don't know why. That's just how it works. But I'm just saying, if you like a girl and you really like her because of her musical taste, that means you like her ex-boyfriend's musical tastes. So why don't you just fuck him? Save a step. Um, so there's a couple millennials in the audience, half dozen. And I want to talk to them for a second because... Now I know you guys have never had a job that didn't involve social media. And for the most part, you guys have never had a job. Um, it's not your fault. There are no jobs for you. Uh, look at yourselves. Um, but no, now that I have you here, and I'm very glad, I'm very glad you're here, but I have been, I want to bounce off two concepts. I'm working on these two apps, okay? I'm working on two big money-making apps because comedy is not cutting it. Um, now the first one, and when I say I'm working on them, you know, I mean... I'm talking about them into a microphone. Because <laughs> I do not know computers. <laughs> Grandma don't know computers. Um, I'm gonna cut it out, cut that out if that's possible. <laughs> so the first one is called uh, You Mad. And, um, and that's it. You point it at a person or a text or a tweet or something. And it tells you if that person is really mad and if you're in trouble. <laughs> or if they're just fucking with you for some reason you don't understand. Because <laughs> I don't always 100% know. And the second one, this is the big money maker. It's just called Who Dat Bitch. <laughs> and you pointed it any bitch. <laughs> and it tells you not only who that bitch is, but also how long she's been Facebook friends with a guy you like. <laughs> like Facebook, we have the technology. We have it. It can recognize your sister, even when it's not your sister, but kind of looks like your sister. So um, every comic knows when you get home, you get free jokes from your parents. Like, yeah. you can use that in your act. I was home and my mom said, oh, one of my Facebook friends said, um, I wish losing weight was as easy as losing your keys or your phone or your mind. <laughs> you can use that in your act. And I said, thank you. I'm not going to, but now I am. And that's meta. I think that's what meta is. Um, my dad doesn't send me a ton of jokes because he's dead. Um, actually, when I... When I was new in comedy, he sent me an email list of jokes. He's like, maybe you can use these, hey, huh, baby? And I looked at him, I'm like, thanks, Dad. I don't think I'm going to do a shit ton of rape material. Um, <laughs> store it away, who knows? <laughs> and uh, so my dad's dead. It's okay, you know, some people have dead dads. And um, if you don't, uh, just wait. Um, <laughs> One day we will be at 100% dead dad. Uh, and I hope it's many years from now, but uh, I did mine early. <laughs> Couldn't wait. Um, so my, the, my dead dad uh, has a Facebook page. And um, I have two sisters. And one sister called me. She was very excited. She was like, ah, I got into dad's Facebook page. I'm running it now. I'm administrating it. I'm like, well, that's fucked up. Why did you do that? And she's like, I just put in the names of all his pets until I got his password. I'm like, but why did you do it? <laughs> and she's like, no, it's nice. Uh, we can put up pictures and like memories and we can uh, like do his year in review. I'm like, you know, Laura, last year he didn't do much. <laughs> so I kept insisting it was a bad idea and she kept insisting it was a good idea and I kind of forget about it. Until his birthday rolls around and the baby sister writes on his page and says, hey dad, I'm thinking about you today. I miss you, I hope you're doing good. And was super surprised 
when my dad wrote back, thanks, baby. <laughs> thanks, baby, I'm doing real good. <laughs> Thank you for thinking of me on my special day. <laughs> Two seconds pass, and I am on a mass text from the little sister saying, who the fuck is running dad's Facebook? Um, I told her it was a bad idea. So I realized recently I wasted my life. It'll happen to you. I was at a party. I was at a party with all comics and we were having fun at the party and everything. And um, one guy had so much fun, he fell down and he hit his head. And then there was this, oh, ooh, moment. Um, just a whole room full of people too drunk to do anything about it. And uh, just like, like uh, and then uh, <clears throat> my friend Leah runs in and she's like, is anyone a doctor or does anyone have any base medical training? <laughs> and that was the moment that I knew I'd wasted my whole life. Because this is, this is pretty much the skill set. Like this is, I have nothing to help a human in need. Like it's this and like some roller skating. I just learned how to backwards skate and I'm super stoked about it. I don't, I don't have, and uh, I was like trying to like do, I was like trying to do the mind palace thing and like dig back, dig back. I'm like, um, check his, uh, check his pupils. Um, check that he has uh, pupils. Um, get him some water, right? Uh, Cause if you put his hand in water, uh, he'll pee. Um, <laughs> Does he need a dick joke? Because I could probably do something about that. Um, so my mother always taught me to, to spin positive, right? To find the silver lining in things. So I wanna share with you some bad news, and, but also some good news. Um, so I know everyone was real upset about Cease of the Lion, and I am too, I think that was shitty. Um, but the facts are facts, and facts are we got 35,000 lions on the planet. Uh, we are down to our last five northern white rhinos. Um, five. Uh, they are under 24-hour surveillance from poachers. But the good news is only one of them is male. <laughs> and that guy's Tinder is blowing the fuck up. <laughs> Match, 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 match. Like, he's surrounded by horny ladies. Like, he's... You know that thing where you go on a date with a girl and she says, not if you were the last man on earth? Like, he is the last northern white rhino on earth. Now, again, there's a downside, which is, in two, three months, the last male northern white rhino will have been fucked to death. But I feel like that's how a lot of us would want to go anyway. Um, I know it's been said before, but like when people say, I would like to die having sex, that's a very, unless it's masturbation, that's a very insensitive thing to say. Because... <laughs> honey? <laughs> like, what if you were in a glory hole type situation? You could make someone do necrophilia. <laughs> um, I've thought about having kids because I would like to also pretend that unconditional love is real. <laughs> so all my girlfriends are having kids, like there's some kind of a contest that we're having that I didn't know we were having. You know, and my Facebook is awash in baby pictures. I'm losing the contest, I know that. <laughs> I know that. I know that. But I also know, if I do a special dance, wait. This needs to be a safe space. If I do a special dance, yeah. I can actually feel my last good egg rattling around in there. I can feel it. It's like a blackened popcorn kernel. <laughs> People who say all babies are beautiful have not seen enough babies. Um, it's like, it's sweet. I understand the motivation behind it, but it's, it's, it's like saying all brides are beautiful. 
And maybe they are on the inside where it doesn't matter. Um, sometimes ugly brides are already pregnant with ugly babies. <laughs> That's how they got to be ugly brides in the first place. And then some of those ugly babies will grow up to be the ugly brides of the future. Lion King. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a lady, uh, I have body issues, like that's what it means to be a lady. Um, if you have body issues, you're a lady. If you're a man with body issues, you are a lady. Um, I struggle with it, you know, it's like, uh, I know every day that I am fat is a failure to my mother, she takes it very personally. Um, and I struggle between my two goal weights. So I live in Los Angeles and my true goal weight is my birth weight. Um, <laughs> because we make movies here and that is what is required. Just a giant head on a tiny, tiny sexy body. Um, and I'm more comfortable, I'm at my base goal weight now because my goal has always been never to get so big that I couldn't see other people's feet. <laughs> and that's always worked for me super, super good. Um, <laughs> And then it goes the other way too, like women are worried that they don't have the upfront assets to maintain long-term interest. And here I'm talking about, you know, tits. And, um, and like that's super easy. Like if you like just eat sandwiches. Like I didn't always have these and then I eat sandwiches and then they just showed up. <laughs> and the great thing about that, the really good science thing about that is that no one's ever complained about it. No one's ever said, these feel sandwichy. <laughs> I, um, I started running a couple years ago and, uh, and they talk about the runner's high, you know, that endorphin rush. And that's absolutely true um, because there is nothing that feels as good as stopping running. <laughs> second you know you can stop. Oh. I don't know if you read this, it's like the opposite in many ways of stopping heroin. Um, but this is science. Uh, those shoes, those little shoes with the toes in them, um, they don't work. There was a study, they don't work. They're ugly and they don't work. And they had to give people back money who bought the ugly little shoes with the toes in them. And it made me a little sad because to me, they do work. Because they let me know immediately who is unfuckable. <laughs> Once I've seen your toes in little plastic holders, I don't want to see anything else. I'm done. One, one thing that's good about getting a little older is um, you get smarter, like, I used to think if it zips, it fits. And now I recognize that if my stomach is in my bra, my dress is too fucking tight. Um, change dresses. Uh, I'm a vegan, and um, people think vegans are super hard, like super complicated, oh, it's a puzzle. And it's not, it's super easy. Everything that grows out of the earth um, is vegan until you start adding animals to it. Um, <laughs> So many things. Just don't add any animals to it. If you add animals to it, I won't eat it. But meat eaters are super fucking picky. You're like, okay, there's two categories of animals, okay. There's the cute ones that we love and hug and kiss. And then there's the ones we eat. And the ones we eat are like cows and pigs and fish. And the ones we love and kiss are um, cats and dogs and little fish and little pigs. You guys are just making this shit up? <laughs> like, you can be doing really well being a carnivore, boom, 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 year to year, eating all the right animals. You slip up and eat one cat and they do not let you forget it. <laughs> they don't. They don't. I've developed a new um, 
category of famousness, uh, YouTube famous, and it doesn't mean that you have a ton of hits on YouTube, but it means that you have enough that people feel free to say awful, awful things to you. Um, my favorite YouTube comment is, um, not bad for a fatso. Um, <laughs> And a lot of people would focus on fatso, but I focus on not bad. Uh, so this happens, and it happens to every female comic. I'm not special, but people come up to me after a show, and when I say people, I mean men. Um, sometimes men will come up to me after a show and go, you know what? I don't usually think women are funny, but you're funny. And I say, you know what? I know that when that was in your brain meat, you like, this is gonna be a great thing to tell Virginia and we're gonna be best friends. And we're gonna go hold hands and skip down the street. But here's why it's crap. Because it's basically like being in a room full of people and pointing at one black person going, you, you're one of the good ones. I can trust you. It's garbage, it's garbage. And I know that women comics haven't always been the most popular kind of comic, but I want to make you guys a promise. If you guys want to be my friend, want to be my fan, I fucking promise right here, I will never drug and rape a bunch of people. I will not do it. It does not matter how famous I get. I won't even, this is a bonus, show my dick to people who don't want to see it. I won't even do that. I won't. I, it doesn't bother me when men don't like feminism, because uh, I understand there's a feeling of loss there. Like, it always sucks uh, when your slaves are freed. Um, it sucks. Because who's going to do the fucking dishes now? Is it me? Uh, in that joke, I'm a man. Um, but it does bum me out when women don't get it, when women say they're not feminist. Uh, because they don't, I feel like young women get feminist and unfuckable confused. Um, it's not true at all. And they say things like that asinine stuff, like, oh, I can't be a feminist. I want to wear makeup and be heterosexual. Um, <laughs> And just to cut to its core, feminism is not about the shit you can't do. <laughs> like we have rights and we have, and people are trying to take them away every fucking day, as recently as yesterday. <laughs> and the only reason we have these rights is because other women before us have fought for them, okay? And the reason you can vote and work and drive <laughs> is because of the women who have gone before and they were feminists and you should be a feminist. Um, because if there were no feminists, this is what feminism has done for all of us. You don't have to spend every day of your life chasing after a husband because otherwise when your dad dies, you have to be a prostitute. So that's what... <laughs> Someone's gotta take care of me, I can't work a job, I can't have birth control, I can't have an abortion, so I'm just gonna be a prostitute with a shit ton of random kids. Um, good times. Uh, yeah, the good times for women have been pretty short. It's basically Amy Schumer forward. Um, but still, if feminism were an Olympic sport, it would be one where the athlete just shot herself in the foot again and again. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about Caitlyn Jenner. Um, people have a lot of questions about Caitlyn. I know it's not the people in this room, but in the outside world, people have a lot of questions about Caitlyn, especially like why did she wait so long to transition when this was obviously so important to her? Uh, and I have a theory, which is um, Caitlyn is a fucking genius. Um, she is 65, that is retirement age. No one is ever gonna fuck that bitch out of money. She does not have to worry about wage equity. She waited until the expiration date. She's good. She's good. She's like, I made my money until I was 65. Now I'm gonna make money as a woman and I'm retired and fuck it. Um, 
Like a lot of you, I get super mad at a hot topic. Um, <laughs> right? Like, if it had been around when I was 15, I probably thought it was pretty, pretty ace. But I grew up, you know, in Texas, weird, not sure what to do. And um, I didn't have, like, your like, one-stop shopping lifestyle department. And I'm a little bit bitter. Plus, every time I go there, people ask me to help them with stuff. But it's like, there's a lot of feeling of like, I didn't have this when I was a kid. Like I didn't have like panic, you know, manic panic and punky colors. Like when I wanted weird colored hair, I had to put Kool-Aid on it in the backyard. And then I didn't have fucking fancy piercing salons. When I wanted a nose ring, I had to put a carrot up my nose. So the safety pin didn't go through the other side. So I did not want to be stapled shut. Did not want that at all. When I was a kid, we didn't have like Pandora or iTunes or Spotify to find new music. When I wanted to find what music was cool, I had to go home with an older guy. <laughs> That's where music comes from. Go through his record collection in the morning. Sometimes you'd be going through, oh, sticks. I have wasted a night of my youth. I grew up in Texas, um, which is a great state uh, to be from. And um, <laughs> it's very conservative, and this bullshit uh, did not fly there um, in any way. Uh, <laughs> and it's so, like, every state has, like, conservative areas, more liberal areas, but in Texas, the whole state is red. And fuck Austin, because it's just a big corporate barbecue place. Um, <laughs> The whole state is red, and that ha when that happens, you, it means people's hearing changes. You say stuff and people hear it wrong. Like you might say, atheist, and they hear, Satanist. <laughs> or you might say, feminist, and they hear, lesbian serial killing prostitute. <laughs> so it's very hard. And in high school, all of my boyfriends were gay. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> I did not know they were. My prom date wore a vinyl tuxedo. I did not know. <laughs> but that's very shiny. I thought that I was dating a series of very good looking men who liked going to parties and who didn't like making out. Um, <laughs> and who got very excited when my shoes fit them. Um, <laughs> one of my best friends in high school uh, came out to his mother as gay, and, um, and she, you know, being a Texas mom, she was kind of like shell-shocked, and uh, she wanted to do something, and she didn't put him out of the house, but she did get rid of his culture club records. Because um, they were making him gay. And uh, she put him out by the curb, and here's the thing. The next week, their garbage man was gay. <laughs> he like came by and he's like, I just discovered something about myself and I feel super free. And uh, I put glitter on your trash cans, I made them fabulous. And um, I wanna know if you wanna go antiquing. Um, I also used to be uh, married um, to a man, in case you were curious. Um, <laughs> And it was okay, like, it was one of those things, like, I think sometimes, and I hope for those of you who aren't married, like, it happens like this. Like, when I met my husband, I just knew we had to get married. Like, I knew we had to, because I knew that we were the last two people in town uh, who did not have herpes. And <laughs> I just really felt like holding on to that. And um, it didn't work out, but you learn stuff. And I learned that marriage is like the wooden puzzle game of Jenga. It can stand for a long time, even though it's full of holes and has no foundation, really, to speak of. <laughs> and also, thing, both things can be destroyed by one drunk whore at a party. Um, <laughs> thank you. 
Uh, my, my ex-husband, was, he's one of those Burning Man people. Um, you've heard of it. And uh, it was frustrating. He wouldn't use underarm deodorant because he was worried that the uh, aluminum would give him Alzheimer's, but he would smoke a pound of weed a week because that has no effect. Um, <laughs> he refused to take a aspirin for a headache because Western medicine is poison. But he would take any drug given to him by a man wearing a fur vest. <laughs> because that's what a doctor looks like. Uh, he, was, uh, he was super into tantric sex, you know? About withhold, withholding, withholding the orgasm. He was super good at it. So I didn't come for like three years. Um, you know that scene in the movie where a woman clutches like a prom dress or like a sweater and she has this like, you see this beautiful montage of her memories that she made wearing that object. And, and I kind of have the same thing because I still have a denim skirt that I got called a cunt in a grocery store in. <laughs> Precious. It's Calvin Klein, I'm not getting rid of it. Um, my, uh, when I started dating again, my mother told me good advice. She was like, you know, they don't buy the cow when they can get the milk for free. And I said, mom, that's super cute. I'm like, that's adorable, that's so sweet. But what the fuck am I supposed to do with all this milk? Like, it goes bad. Did you know it goes bad? Like, eventually it turns into cheese. Nobody wants, nobody wants the cheese. Um, so, men are attracted to women with blonde hair and big tits, and that's something we know scientifically. And, um... You know, if you are that, you've noticed. And if you aren't that, you've also noticed, you know, just from being at parties and whatever. Like, why is everyone talking to her? I have a good personality. And, you know, they can't help it. They wouldn't do anything to piss us. Like, why would they make a choice that would piss us off? But it's kind of a universal, it's a very Western thing. It is a very Western thing. Um, but it, it's because of the, the man's lizard brain, like way back in the back of his head. And like every gentleman, of course, has different areas. And you've got like college professor lizard brain, and then, you know, NASCAR enthusiast, and then <laughs> Charlie Sheen, and then just, and then Tiger Woods, it's all lizard, and then this is just golf. And then, um, and it's because his lizard brain tells him something that he intellectually can't process, which is, oh, if she has blonde hair and big tits, like she's still young, she can still have my kids, I can still spread my seed the way I want to. Um, and of course they can be tricked because they're very stupid, but, <laughs> you know, women are sometimes, they're programmed a little bit differently. So sometimes women are attracted to, you know, an older gentleman, a sophisticate, someone, a, a silver fox, someone with a little bit of life experience because she knows in her lizard brain, he's gonna die soon. <laughs> and I can get his stuff, right? I can TiVo the shows that I wanna watch. Sometimes people like to dance and redecorate. Everything doesn't have to be about solving crime. <laughs> in a lab for people who are already dead and it makes no difference to. Sad fact, the people who tell you that they are in open relationships are never the people you wish would tell you they were in open relationships. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles, California. Hugh Jackman has never said shit to me. <laughs> you know, because if he's like, oh, you know, the wife and I, we have an understanding. I'm like, I'm listening, Wolverine. Uh, tell me more. Because, a little sidebar, um, I don't know if you saw the last Wolverine movie. Um, it was real, real good. Um, <laughs> there's like a scene at the window and his butt's out and there's just sun coming through the window and you're like, who is this for? Are these, 
these are supposed to be for men movies, but um, it's just a lot of lady porn and then a fight scene, so guys can go, I'm not gay. Um, <laughs> just like all coming through Captain America's eyelashes and then butt, I don't get it. So, I mean, I do, I get it uh, a lot. And Wolverine, he got so big, like his head was just on this triangle of meat that was his neck and um, <laughs> real, real big. And then, um, and that's not even my favorite Wolverine movie. I like the kind of not as good Wolverine movie, Wolverine Origins. <laughs> because in that movie, Wolverine jumps off a waterfall naked, and if you have the right kind of DVD player, <laughs> can make out a wolverine um, <laughs> But that's never what happens. That's never what happens. What happens is, a gentleman comes up to you and says, Stacy and I do not believe in restricting our bodies to the ridiculous social mores of the day. We are brave explorers. We have invented the fucking other people. Nobody did it before us. And I always say the same thing, which is, um, I'm sorry, am I standing on your leather cape? I will move. Um, a couple of years ago, I was on a date with a super hot, like some kind of Euro trash, I don't remember. Um, and he goes, uh, he goes, you should come home with me because uh, I like it to fuck fat girls. I'm like, well, I wanted to too and now I can't. So, uh, thank you. Um, there's a lot of articles about ghosting, about the thing where you're talking to someone, you're dating someone. You're, you, it's not been one or two dates, you've been dating. You've been dating and then you just stop responding. Whew. Charlize Theron did it to Sean, Sean Penn after two years. Two years, just stop responding. And I feel kind of like an innovator because I got ghosted a couple years ago before it had a cute name. <laughs> when it was just called getting dumped by a fucking psychopath. <laughs> I'd never heard of it happening before. And I was like, well, should I call his mom? Is he in rehab? Uh, <laughs> and my friend Lizzie said, uh, you guys are just broken up. I'm like, I don't see how that's true. Uh, <laughs> we never had a fight. What kind of sense does that make? Um, gentlemen, good advice for you, because I want you to have good advice. If your lady, this is manners, if your lady says yes to anal, and she might, I don't know you guys. I mean, I do, but I don't, right? <laughs> if she says yes, be a gentleman about it. Keep that at home. Keep that between the two of you. I don't want a lot of, you know, gym room talk because I want to talk about what it means. It's not because <laughs> your love is special <laughs> and it's not because you're dating an amazing sexual explorer <laughs> whose mind you have blown. <laughs> if she says yes, it's for one reason really and that is that you have a little dick. <laughs> she's seen it, she's thought about it, she says, you know what, this isn't gonna change my life that goddamn much. <laughs> and besides, it's his birthday. <laughs> I hate that you had to learn this from me. <laughs> Nobody likes it less than I. Well, that's not true. <laughs> but um, a man, uh, a friend of mine, and when I say a friend of mine, I mean, you know, a male comic I don't like. Um, 
And there is no point trying to figure out which one it is because there is, there's so many. Um, but he asked me, Why do, how come men still have to pay for dates? Is this where feminism has brought us? Why aren't we equal? And I said, you know, it's a fair question. The answer is super simple. First couple dates, you're displaying interest, you're courting. The core answer is a simple one of economics and the free market system. It is because what we have is worth more than what you have. <laughs> I don't want it to go this way, and my mother wouldn't be proud of me, but if I had to, I could make money with this. You guys can't give it away for free on Craigslist. <laughs> and you know you can't, because most of you have tried. Women get so few things in life, you know? We suffer and we have kids and we have pain and all this stuff and we don't make as much money. But we're worth more and our sex toys work. <laughs> our sex toys are beautiful. They look like hearts and flowers and butterflies. Men's sex toys look like a piece of animal intestine that has been thrown to the ocean floor <laughs> to take on water. <laughs> you can fuck it if you want. I'm not jealous of that. <laughs> Our sex toys vibrate. Do any of you vibrate? <laughs> Have you thought about what would happen if science took one-tenth of the money we put into making old men's dicks hard into making them vibrate? <laughs> it would change the goddamn paradigm is what it would do. <laughs> Guys, I want you to call your doctor tomorrow and say, are you a reputable physician? And if he says yes, call another doctor. I mean, it's gotta be like a simple implant, a simple implant, put a thing in there, like a little vibrating thing, not a squeaky toy, no one wants that. <laughs> and sure, probably, probably, odds are, it would turn septic and your dick would fall off, but I only need it for a couple hours. <laughs> Just for that much. In closing, I do wanna say seriously, um, if you do have a vibrating dick. Um, I will buy dinner. I will. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Virginia Jones, everybody! Thank you guys so much for coming out. Give her a big hug after the show. Tip your bar staff. Travel home safe. Good night.